Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing something I haven't done yet that I've been wanting to try and I got the inspiration and the idea from two people. So the technique or the design, the, the way that this is going to be made is inspired by Sue Finley. If you haven't checked her out, please check her out. I will link her below. She does amazing things with resin. She does sculptures and paintings and all kinds of texture and really, really pleasant to watch. And I just adore her. So the technique that I'm going to be using to make my piece originally came from watching her videos. Now the idea for the shape of this came from one of my subscribers. Uh, we were talking about it a while ago and she probably thought I forgot, but I haven't. Uh, so the shape that I'm going to be doing is thanks to Miss Tina Marie Malinowski, my girlfriend. So what I'm going to be doing is I have a piece of thick styrofoam here that I got at Lowe's. It was originally twice the size I cut it in half. Um, I would say it's about a half inch thick, although you do not need a piece that thick to do this technique. You can get away with something probably like this, which is only, I would say a quarter inch thick. Depending on how thick you want your piece of resin art to be is what's going to determine the width of styrofoam you get. Now, my piece is not going to be a half inch thick, but I wanted the more sturdy piece of cardboard to work on, so or styrofoam to work on, so that's why I got that big, thick, thick piece like that. So what you do with this technique is you cut a shape out in the styrofoam, cut it straight out so that you now have a die or a mold and then you take a piece of plastic lay it inside and then you design with your resin it cures and you pop it out and basically it's like doing a freeform geode except using a piece of styrofoam for your barrier so what I'm going to do now is I did a couple of little clips of drawing my shape and cutting them out, I had my hubby help me. So I'm gonna show you that part now. I'm, it's a fast forward type of clip because it's just boring drawing and cutting. And then when after that, you will see, I'm gonna come back and we'll get started. First thing you're going to do is get a piece of foam and draw the shape that you want to create. Next step, cut your piece. So now here is my lightning bolt cut out. So the first thing I need to do is put a piece of plastic. You can use, Sue uses she calls them bin liners, which I absolutely love, but to us, they're garbage bags or trash can bags. Um, you can use one of those, cut it so it's open and flat and stuff it in there. Or this is a piece of that uh, plastic that painters drop that we cover our tables in. Any type of shiny plastic will work. So I'm going to leave this on top of this other piece of styrofoam just for support. But anyway, you take your piece of plastic and now you have to lay it in there. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this piece of resin, when it comes out, it's not going to be smooth on the back. We're going to try to get it as smooth as possible, but it's not going to be perfectly flat. And that is okay. It'll have a few wrinkles in it, but it is the back after all, so who cares? 
So just tuck it in there as best as you can. Now for me, doing this design, these corner, this one corner here is really tight. So I'll have to be careful with that. But once the resin starts filling in, it should hold this back a little bit too. All right. So now for my colors, and I'll play around and adjust this as I go. As for my colors, when you look at a lightning bolt in the sky, it's what well, in Connecticut anyway, they look white. But lightning bolts are different colors all over the place. Now, scientifically, they may all be the same color, but in the sky, they show up as different colors. For me, I'm envisioning a very transparent, all blue shade lightning bolt with a little bit of white. So what I'm going to use to achieve that are four transparent colors, two opaque colors, very little opaque colors, and some Rust-Oleum white spray paint. So the colors I'm using Two of them are by Resinart, and that is the Cobalt Blue and the Bahama Mama. And I'm going to show you how to mix these tints. And then I'm going to use two alcohol inks, Patina and Stream. For the two opaque colors, I'm using Resin Art Aquamarine and Azure Mist. And then, as I said, for the white, I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Gloss. Okay? So, as for the tints, these tints, I don't know the technical makeup of them, and Leslie has told me this a hundred times, but I just, it doesn't sink in, like all the technical stuff. So, they, if you've ever used a resin art color, these things, it's like putting a hot knife through butter. You put this into the resin and it literally like melts in within a couple of stirs and it's fully incorporated. These are made with different uh, materials. So they do break down, but they take a little more work than what we're used to with the resin art colors. So you can use these in resin and you can use them to make an alcohol ink. I am going to be using these to make an alcohol ink, but I don't need a lot, so I'm not going to make, you know, a huge bottle of it. I'm going to take some 99% isopropyl alcohol. If you can't find it at your local store, I've heard Costco has it. I've heard uh, online, Amazon. I went to my pharmacist and he ordered it for me and it was $4 for the bottle. Um, I guess what it is, is the higher the percentage is on the alcohol, the less water it has in it. So this is the best one to help break down these, uh, tents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to put in This is a little taster spoon. Just a little taster spoon worth of each color. These colors are very pigmented. So I'm going to get a clean spoon because, believe it or not, this little bit on this spoon will affect the color of this other one if I use it to scoop out. Because they are very, a lot of pigment in these. They're very good quality. So that's the Bahama Mama. This is the clear cobalt. Okay. And I'm going to make a little bit more of that color. So I'll add a little bit more. It's probably too much. I always over add with these. So now, if you were going to use these for resin, like to literally pour it right into the resin, you would put just a couple of drops in. And of course, I don't have my droppers here. So let me put a little bit in a cup. 
So if you were going to use this for resin art, you would put a, just a couple of drops in there. Mix it around until it's all a little saturated. Okay. Break it up. It doesn't take much alcohol. Okay, so you have like this little tiny bit of wet stuff now. I know my technical terms are awesome. And then what you would do is pour a little tiny bit of resin in here, make a paste, and then add that into the cup of resin you want to color. But since I want to make an alcohol ink out of it, I'm going to add some more alcohol in here. And really... Stir it up good and not do that again. These spoons are no good. <laughs> They're too flexible. They're bouncing everywhere. Okay, so just mix it up really good. You can kind of tilt the cup to the side. All right, so... Now, when I add that into my resin, I'm not going to dump all of that in there. I'm just going to add a couple of drops of it, and it's going to color the resin. So now we'll do this color here. And depending on how much alcohol that you add, um, you know, if you want to, if you save these bottles, and want to reuse them you could pop the top off that's that's in there and refill them this is a very inexpensive way to do that too so we have that now add a little bit more into this because i don't want to waste it that should be good so now at the bottom of the cup, there will be a little bit of sediment left there. Now you, if you're doing alcohol inks, you can kind of just like pour it into the cup or the bottle and not pour what's at the bottom of this cup. Just leave it in there. With resin, it's going to dissipate and dissolve. So, but like I said, you really want to mix them up good when you're using them with the resin as, um, I, I know it's confusing because I am using them with resin, but I'm using them in an alcohol ink kind of way with the resin, not using them to color the resin. So I hope I didn't really just confuse you bad. So now I have a clear cup, nothing, no sediment or anything like that. Okay. And then we have this one here is good to go there's nothing in the bottom of that one so we're good so anyway i'm going to mix up my resin now with the rest of the colors and i'll show you the colors and then we will get this going all right so i'm going to mix my colors on screen with you just so you can see how i use these tints so i mixed up 24 ounces of resin Now I want a lot of transparents, don't forget. Oh, static electricity is awesome this time of year. The resin is literally like flying through the air from static. <laughs> the little strings that hang off at the end. All right. So these are the two resin art tints that I'm going to use. So here is the clear cobalt, clear cobalt. Um, let's do this one here. So you can see how much I added there. Make a stick here. 
give it a swish through to see if it's a nice color, which it is. Right? Beautiful. Hope you guys can see that. And then this is going to be the Bahama Mama. So it does not take much at all. Let's try a couple of drops in this big cup. Let's see how much that works, which I'm having a feeling it won't be enough. That's probably too little. But if you want a nice aqua color, look at that nice clear aqua. I need it to be a little bit darker than that, but that's a perfect color for water right there. That is a beautiful aqua color. That should be good now. That's a nice color right there. Okay, so there's those two. Now, I'm going to use the Ranger inks only because I don't have the shades in the resin art tints that I need. Um, okay. This will be the Dream. I'm having a feeling the patina may be very similar to the other one, the Bahama Mama, but let's see. This is Stream. I love this color, actually. It's a really pretty color. See that? And then the last one for the tint will be the patina. I'm going to add quite a bit of this into here. But don't forget, alcohol thins out resin too. So I tend not to care about how much I use when it comes to resin with this. Acrylic paint, you can't do that with. That you want to use only 10%. So I'm just going to hold these side by side here. Nope, they're different colors. Okay. And now on to the resin art tints, or resin art colors. Now, again, I don't want to use too much opaque because it will take over. And this is primarily a transparent piece. So that's going to be my aquamarine. I 
and that will be the other color the azure mist azure azure I'm not sure how it's pronounced so this is the azure mist these powders are very shiny and they are preconditioned so it behaves like a paste but it's not a paste and I always over add this is supposed to be an eighth of a teaspoon per ounce of resin I have this bad habit of over adding and I don't know why I keep doing it but I do it before I can stop myself all right so there's that all mixed in that quick very beautiful color and last but not least my favorite blue in the line the aquamarine beautiful beautiful color all right so here we go it's that time hoping this bag will stay in there only time will tell this is my first attempt at doing this so um we'll see how it goes so first let's add some clear in there just for the heck of it thinking there needs to be a way to cut this and tape it so that it stays down better. All right, so here comes the first color, the clear cobalt. And I'm just literally just going to start dumping them in there and layering them. Gotta get those corners down. getting there guys it's getting there next time I think I'm gonna cut it and tape it or glue it to the foam just so it's easier All right this one was I don't know <laughs> I didn't know Can't remember. That might have been the Bahama Mama. This is the pool, or not the pool, the patina. A little bit of the aquamarine.
the Azure Mist. Just kind of strangling it through right now. I will be blending them. And this is I think the stream. Get some more weight in here. Let's see if this was glued down to the bottom, it will work a lot better. I'll mess with it after I'm done designing it. Um, all right, let's see here. I'm gonna add a little more clear into this cup here for some more of that cobalt. And also into these other ones here. By the time I'm done, my piece will be a half inch thick. <laughs> I wasn't planning on that, but. See, you have to try these things one time. And you're not always going to succeed the first time. You know? You have to, to go through it. To learn it. All right, sorry about that. I had a, my daughter, she knows I'm filming. She still does it. Turns that music on. All right, so I just spilled on the side here the rest of my Bahama Mama, so I guess I won't be adding any more of that. So I wasn't watching what I was doing. It's all in there. All right, that's that one. Okay. I'm going to do the rest of the opaques so that I can push them down and move them around with the other colors.
Okay. And now the rest of these. Uh, let's see here. I was actually thinking about adding some glitter in here, but you know what? I'm going to. All right, so here's what I'm going to show you right now. I have some just for you chunky unicorn glitter, and I think adding it down into the design, it's going to change the color of it, but I feel like it's going to have some magical effects on here. So what I will do first is... Add just a tiny bit of resin to a cup and test it. So here's the little bit. Now I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of this in there. Yeah, you see that? Glorious. And again, I have to thank them for sending me some of their beautiful glitters to try out. They are very, very sparkly. So let's see right down in here. Yeah, it's sinking. That's perfect. So. We just kind of weave it through just like the rest of the colors. Don't want to add too much. Okay, let me add a little bit more to the cup here. This is gonna be pretty. These glitters are used by a lot of popular artists. They are just gorgeous. Top quality. All right, here we go. Put some down in there. Just going to add a little sparkle to the piece. I'm not going to pour the rest of this in yet. I'm going to pour in, let me add a little bit more, a little bit more. And then I will use the rest of this up. Again, this is the Chunky Unicorn. And I'll take it out and put it on my hands so you can really see it when I'm done here. Just Got to get that resin going up into that corner now. Right. So for that, I'm going to add the rest of the clear, or not the clear, the uh, inks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you for a minute, fix this lining, and then I'll come back to design it. All 
right in that tip. Okay. So she wrote on that. We got one more color left. Yeah, so when you're designing your shape with the foam, be mindful of like pointy tips like that. I'm hoping I can get it to where it needs to be, but that could present a problem. Actually, this whole liner could present a problem. Well, hopefully not. Let's think positive. Okay, so I'm going to pause you really quick and be right back. So before my hands get dirty again, here's the uh, chunky unicorn. Texture is light and fluffy. Really, really pretty, guys. Just wanted to show you that. All right, so I was able to fix my bag, and here is how, in case this happens to you. What I did was I pulled up on it. Hold on a second. I just wanted to use this little bit of glitter. I don't want to waste it. So I lifted this end up and kind of went along the side like this. And the resin just seeped down into the corners where it needed to be. So now I'm going to leave it alone. And I'm going to come into the center. Well, I'm going to heat it, heat it and then come into it with a skewer or something and swirl the colors around so let me do the heat gun be careful with the heat gun and the plastic you don't want to melt your styrofoam and all that which will happen actually i'm wondering if it's good to heat it down enough to this to hold it if that makes sense. See how it's suctioning to the styrofoam? There we go. Maybe that's better. Yeah, look at that. It's suctioning it to the styrofoam. Helping. You don't want to do it too much, though, because it will melt it. All right, I'm done. It will melt the plastic, and it will start pouring through, so I don't want to do it too much. All right, so I have these bougie skewers that I bought for artwork, not for my grill. And if my husband knew that, he'd kill me. <laughs> $5 skewers going through resin. Are you kidding me? Use the cheap ones. <laughs> you hear it now. But anyway, I'm going to just take this and kind of do some little swirling through this piece. And it's going to be done. Lightly, don't rip at that liner underneath. Boy, I cannot wait for this to be done to take it out to see how it came out. So you see how that the opaques are just enough? Let's get some down in here too. All right. That's it. I'm done. I like the design. I'm going to show you it up close. And I'm going to wipe off this fancy skewer, my bougie. Hey, I got Royal Mail. I'm bougie now. <laughs> so I can use it again. And I'm just going to take my little torch and get in there really quick. And I'll come back probably every 15 minutes for the first hour popping bubbles. It's 
try to stay away from the plastic as much as you can. The sides there and the styrofoam because you don't want to melt that. All right, so let me get you down and give you a look. So as far as the resin, uh, I'm sorry, as far as the glitter goes, I do have a code. Um, it is resin head. You can put either caps or no caps. Just type in the word resin head however you want. That qualifies you for 10% off of your order. And I'm going to link just for you uh, underneath in the description. And check them out. They have some gorgeous stuff. They have pigments too. So give them a whirl. They have some rocks and pigments. They have a little bit of everything. Here's the website and I will link it. And I want to thank them again for believing in me. And let me uh, show you this up close. I'm thinking with the bright light off, you'll see better detail. Anyway, you, you're not really going to know what it looks like until I pop it out. I have to try to fix those corners somehow. So you could see through that area right there, the wrinkle. See it right down there? So that'll be a wrinkle in the back, but things like that. I mean, I'm going to really look into this and see if there's a way to really tack these bags down. So that you don't have to deal with that. I'm sure that I can uh, put it down. But anyway, all you're seeing is the reflection of my phone at this point. <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching and um, stay tuned for the end result. Okay, so this is what you do when you're a complete moron and forget to use one of the colors you were supposed to use. I forgot to do my white, guys. So, we're going to add it in. I had to mix up more resin and everything. All right, so when using spray paint, you want to spray it into a paper cup first. Spray paint eats plastic like this, All right? So spray it in, not over your project. well-ventilated area okay so that you have some spray paint in the cup then take the cup that you want to mix your color into put it somewhere flat pour I don't want a lot of white so just putting that much the rest of this clear is going into this piece because I've decided since I had to mix this up anyway that I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So here's my little cup of <clears throat> clear. I'm going to put a couple of drops of this paint in there. Oh, hell, I'm just going to use it all. So I had about a uh, probably a teaspoon worth of paint between a teaspoon and a half, a uh, teaspoon and a half. Spray paint is another thing I find that doesn't bother resin too much as far as making it thicken up. Now see, even this was too much white that I just mixed. So I'm just going to let me drag it through there. Or maybe instead of dragging it, I'll just drip it a little bit. And then pour the clear on it. Ooh, what was that? That was something not nice in my spray paint.
Now, don't forget, this is going to be the front of your... Oh, there is something in this piece. Oh, I know what's going on. This resin, <laughs> there's nothing in the resin. This resin is thicker than the resin I'm putting in. And it's globbing onto, or it's mixing in with the newer resin and it's like clumping up because it's thicker. All right, that's enough. And I'm going to go in with this clear and give it hell, all of it. And I guess my piece did turn out to be a half inch thick. And now that I've done that, I'm going to add a little more of a color in there. Let's see, I think we'll go with a light color, like the uh, patina. Kind of just push it all down in there. All right, that's it now. So now I'm going to torch it one more time. <laughs> Watch your plastic. I've already burnt mine a couple times. As you can see, it's smoking again. That's it. Alrighty, so now I will bring you back to show you how it came out. All right, I want you guys to see this in the daylight before I remove it so you can see the actual depth in it. Now the glitter did move out to the sides of the piece, so I may uh, do a top coat over that with a very, very light um, aqua color. But you can see there, this is just amazing looking inside. And the glitter is only going to add to this once it's all said and done. Look at that. And from heating that plastic, it shrunk it up against the... Uh, lightning bolt so we shall see once i pop it out how much work needs to be done to it but i am just really like shocked well, i'm not shocked because i knew i would get a lot of depth but just the design of it is really really pretty all right so let's pop this sucker out all right guys it's about that time let me just put on this light here, and we'll see if this thing pops out. I hope that it's not stuck to the styrofoam in some spots, especially when I was heating it with that heat gun, you know? Well, uh, anyway, let's see. Oh, seems to be lifting out except for right here and here, <laughs> except for everywhere. Well, let's see what kind of damage I did. And it's glued to the thing underneath, so I definitely burnt a hole in it. Really didn't want to break this, but... Mute. Mute your phone. 
Oh, wow, that's crazy. It literally, because it heat up so much, that stupid resin I used, um, that master cast, it literally, wait till you see this. <laughs> oh, wow. It's not too bad on the back, though. Mold's still good. Ooh, let's get her out. Of course, it will have to be trimmed and all that good stuff. And most likely sanded. guys this is probably the last thing you want to see but I want you to see how difficult it is to get out of here don't want to fast forward too much or at all in this case so it's just like the little pieces it's stuck on And there's a couple of areas that went in. So I have to revisit how to get this bag to stay down. Because you could see it went into a couple of, in the corners here especially. Alright, I'm just going to cut it for now. Just so I can show you guys the piece. I'll clean it out afterwards. get that after so anyway well you gotta see the depth in this I know I showed you earlier but look at that it didn't come out half bad for my first try So anyway, that's it. So now what am I going to do to it? I will probably just sand down the edges a little tiny bit to get rid of this stuff. And then the back, get rid of the plastic. And then what I will do is just put some clear resin over the entire thing and use my hand on the sides. And that's done. I can't do a video on that, though. Unfortunately, it's too cold in Connecticut to sand. So, it'll have to wait. But, nonetheless, very pretty. And the glitter is very pretty in there. But, this glitter, I have to use it on a different project so you can really see how beautiful it is. Because, this isn't the best use of it. All right, guys, so I hope you all have a great night. Any questions, comments, leave them below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to check out Sue Lindley. Sue Finley, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sue Finley, I'm thinking of Sharon Lindley. Sue Finley, have a great night, guys, and happy pouring.